Thank you for coming. Bless your heart for being there. Now, this time, I have a most intriguing program for you. I'm sure you're going to be thrilled with this because I'm going to roll out pastry. And it is something I do with really consummate skill. It's roll out pastry. In fact, I do it tolerably well also. This is something which comes from an area of Italy. And it comes from the central area of Italy, not very far away from Modena, where they have a communist government and are very happy about it. I'm not here to promote communism. You should see the way they take communism. It's fabulous. It really is. They laugh about the whole business. And they all wear Stalin moustaches and sort of get a big kick out of it. So that, that is um, Modena, and Reggio Emilia is very close to that. And it's a wonderful place. It's a lovely part of the world. And that's where we're going to today. We're going to nick across to Italy and have a look at Reggio Emilia, the place where we went and found this incredible thing that you're going to be seeing right now. This is a rather charming restaurant. And there is a chef in that restaurant who spends most of his time sparing lovely noise of This lady is holding some of the sort of thing that I'm going to be making for you in just a couple of minutes' time. And isn't she gorgeous? If you'd like to hop through to the kitchen with me, I'll show you how we do it. I just wanted you to see these because they look like a whole variety of closed pegs, but we'll put those into the oven now, and you'll see the most extraordinary thing will happen to them. They'll probably come out exactly like that. <laughs> <coughs> right. They go into the, um, into the bottom oven this time, uh, just in there. That has been set at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We leave them in there for roughly, I would say, about seven or eight minutes. That normally does it. After that, they go black. <laughs> now, now, it is my very great pleasure to show you the second star billing on our fantastic program now which is called Fish and Bike and Rowls. <laughs> I once saw somebody on television, and no names, no pat drill, doing coconut droppies. This was, <laughs> I won't mention the country even, uh, but coconut droppies and, what was the other one called? Honey and Fruit Crunch. <laughs> and it really is quite fascinating how these lovely sort of things are made, you know. But this, this poor lady, was saying, now I put my honey and fruit crunch into my lamington dish and then I place it away into the oven and it gets all around the air circulation. She closed the door and she went, oh, I caught my finger in the door. <laughs> and um, it, was, it was absolutely hilarious. I, I really did enjoy it terribly. We do prefer to do a more straightforward program because... <laughs> <coughs> now, watch this, and I'll show you something which is really quite... Oh, then she did coconut droppies. And honestly, I just folded up every time she said that. <laughs> I'm now going to turn to my coconut droppies. <laughs> yeah? And there she was with this piping, and she's going... <laughs> all over the top of this thing. And they looked awful, you know. <laughs> and right at the end of the program, have a pot of tea there and a plate full of these coconut droppies. And she said, now... We're going to have a cup of tea together. Now, will you have one lump or two? <laughs> right to you, you know, sitting the other side of that television set. Uh, as though you could do anything about it, you know. <laughs> Perhaps you take lemon, I don't know, but uh, that's what it is. Anyway, so you then roll up this piece of bacon around that slice of fish. And the fish, you might have noticed, as we are now attracting a complete nationwide um, audience of gourmets, I really hardly think I have to say, uh, is soul, just a little soul. And that is just poked through there. Now, if you didn't want to do this, uh, you don't have to, but uh, this is a marvelous <laughs> idea, is that you roll these things up like that, and you can spread parsley butter on them too, but they don't taste very nice. And then <laughs> you, just <coughs> you just get a skewer, a long skewer, or if you're somewhere where there are any bamboo uh, trees. <laughs> you get um, a sprig of bamboo, and then you skewer all these things together like a kebab, a shashlik, a brochette, or a teko teko. And you just jam them all together, and you build a little fire on the beach. And then you put these things on this long sort of skewer, like that. 
and you jam it into the sand and you build a fire in the middle and then you have a glass of beer and you just wait and all these cook around you and if you haven't tried that it's really very good fun that fills in a bit of time and then you place these onto a grill rack that's a grill rack that's come undone I wonder why that came undone we'll put another stick through there we don't want to do these things badly and that goes down into there that's come undone as well <laughs> with luck they could all come undone couldn't they <laughs> all right so that's all done is this your first program with me uh, at home because you might be wondering mightn't you but um <laughs> so we get on and we we're terribly educational really <laughs> you can put us on channel 13. right <coughs> There we are. Now, pastry. That's that done. You see, it's quick, isn't it? Now, this extraordinary contraption here is a piece of pastry. And I am very good at making puff pastry. <coughs> I've made it four times in my life. And you'll notice that I am actually quite professional about this because you see those dents in the pastry. I'll make them a little more so. You see that? It's sort of <laughs> like a six-toed abominable snowman. <laughs> the, um, that shows that you have turned the pastry six times. Every time you turn the pastry, you do another couple of things on the top. Uh, and that is, and by the way, when you throw the, um, <laughs> when you throw the flour, you do it in an oblique angle with a little sort of flick of the wrist like that, and it's all done. <laughs> now, <coughs> A little bit of flour on the top and that is a rolling pin with casters on it so that you really don't have to work too hard at this business and you're away this is where I this is why I wore white shoes and, <laughs> and white trousers the rocking <laughs> You don't want to get a fold in it, otherwise it doesn't work. The rocking motion is important in the rolling out of puff pastry, is the seesaw effort, so that you don't actually use the strength of your arms at all, but more you use this sort of business like that. Right? I think you'll find that works quite well. Then you can pull it... <laughs> good quality puff pastry <laughs> and just a little further and I think we've just about done it now <laughs> there we are just let it go over the side of the bench <laughs> and it's All absolutely perfect there now. Now, let's put the fish and bacon rolls underneath the grill, because that's how they cook. <coughs> 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 Under they go, leave the grill door open always. I'm sorry, the broiler. And open this up and you have, and you're met with an aroma of aromas. I want to ask that lot there, can you smell it? Oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes, you can smell it. And look what's happened to the clothes pegs. <laughs> they have all gone into pig's ears. That's a good specimen. And that's how they're done. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that now. You just... That's how you get them off, first of all. <laughs> and then, <coughs> now, you roll out this piece of pastry so it's that wide. Then you scatter the whole thing with Parmigiano Reggiano. And that's what they call it there, which I promised you I would tell you about. And you roll it all into the top, and you're fine, and you'll be very worried about it, because you'll say, that's not rolling in. And it's not. <coughs> <laughs> but that's all right, it'll roll. So you keep on rolling it in, and as you're actually rolling it out, 
you know, with that motion that I showed you. Instead of flour, use Parmigiano Reggiano. Huh? And Parmigiano Reggiano is Parmesan cheese because, you see, I think now is as good a time as any. There was a Duke of Parma. And the Duke of Parma, one day he was walking through his vineyards. I think it's Russian, but still. He was walking through <laughs> his vineyards, Lambrusco. And he saw a little marvel. That's Mexican. And he saw, I'm very good at accents, but I can't get the right one. Um, <laughs> And he saw this little chap there, and he said, hey there, fellow, that's better, hey there, fellow, make me a cheese. And this poor little chap doffed his hat and says, yes, governor. And he rushed off, and he whopped up this cheese. And he brought it back, and because he was the Duke of Parma, he said, I will call it Parmesan, after Parma, you see. And so, I'm, this, I'm really getting warmed up with this. And <coughs> so... As a result of this, he sent this cheese all over the world to his mates. And they came back and they said, Beaut stuff, great, marvellous, we like it. So that was all right. And <laughs> after, after a number of years, it became internationally famous, you see. But at that, that time, Parma used to cover the whole area. And there was a little tiny place called Reggio Emilia, right in the province of Parma. Then, when they rezoned the thing because of political things, <laughs> Palmer was there and Reggio Media was here, but that's where they made the cheese. Now, these blokes had the tame Parmesan and these people made it. So they said, no, we'll call it Regizan or something like that. And they said, ridiculous. So, what they did, they made it Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the name for the cheese now. So, if anybody tells you it's Parmesan, so no it isn't, it's Parmigiano Reggiano, and that's the reason. <laughs> well, I thought you'd like to know. <laughs> anyway, right, no, 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 no. Ah. So then you, then you fold, actually that should fold into the middle a bit. So you fold that into the middle like that, and that up there, and then you break an egg. And just crush that egg down, and then get hold, <laughs> And then whip it all up, like so. And when you whip it all up, then you brush it uh, across the top, like that. Uh -huh. Just like that. It's quite simple, really. Do, would you mind me, just for a moment, just nicking over to my <laughs> broiler? I don't want to spoil your concentration, but um, I, I must just have a look and see how this fish and bacon rails are getting on. <laughs> <laughs> they're burning on the top. How beautiful. <laughs> the idea now is that you turn them over, which is a bit of a trial, but that's why you've got the cocktail stick there, so that you can turn them over. And they are really rather charming, you know, and they're very nice to serve as a first course when you've got friends in to din din. And uh, <laughs> just, just before they're going to be served with their din din, you give them a fish and back and row. With luck, they won't stay for dinner. <laughs> Off we go. Right. <laughs> now, having reached this extraordinary stage, you sprinkle a little Parmigiano Reggiano on the top, which you know all about now anyway, and then you just flop that edge over onto that one. And then you sort of smooth it down. And then the most incredible thing happens. You get a knife, and you cut through each piece like so. And that's all you have to do, all the way down. And then you dredge it either side in Parmigiano Reggiano, and pinch it together, put your finger in there, and spread it out like a, like, like a hook, like a clothes peg. Hmm? That's marvelous. Now, all you do is just anoint that we just place that on there, like that, and then just dab a little bit and just brush it on the top. Huh? And just spread it open. Uh, when that goes into the oven, it will come out and look just exactly like that. Isn't that fascinating? Right. <coughs> so, when you get it straight out of the oven, nice and hot, we'll leave that over there because I want to have those for afters because they're very nice. And you can sprinkle sugar on them and fill them up with raspberry jam, as I said. Confiture.
And, uh, and there we go. <coughs> Excuse me a moment. <coughs> ah. <coughs> All cleaned down, ready to go. And then what you do is you get two ounces of butter, you get two ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano, <coughs> A little screw of salt, but not much, some freshly ground pepper there, and some cayenne pepper here. Good shake of cayenne pepper, which is quite hot over the top. And then you get hold of a fork and you smash it all up together. Now, when it's all integrated, excuse me just one moment whilst I go and have a look at my fish and bacon rolls. <coughs> Oh, that'll do. <coughs> and then you chop up the chives and you get about three tablespoons full of chives. Don't tell your neighbours about this programme, will you? <laughs> Let's just keep it a deadly dark secret between just you and I. <laughs> and you throw the chives into the top. But it really works and I hope you'll do it because it's really excellent. And then you get this slosh here and then you get two roughly equally matching pieces of this beautiful mixture, like that. And then you just pile that on in between and stick that one on there and squeeze it slightly. And doesn't that look grand? <laughs> uh, now that's, that's marvellous. And you can serve them au naturel if you wish. <laughs> I have got such a fantastic accent. Um, Au naturel is like that, and they're rather nice to eat, or you can serve them all plumped up like that, which is also really rather choice. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, here, one got. <laughs> now, I'm going to see whether my audience was attending. What are these called? I think we'll have a small change. There you are. <laughs> Parmesan, wonderful pig's ears from Parmigiano Reggiano, and fish and bacon rolls for that man over there. <laughs> there we go. You know, I've been looking forward to this for absolutely ages, those fish and bacon rolls. And <laughs> you just pluck out the cocktail stick. One each, mind you, no more. Marvellous. It's what you'd expect them to taste like. <laughs> but on the beach, when you've got a bit of grit in it, it's fantastic. <laughs> it is. Now, I can't say I've been exactly looking forward to this, because <coughs> it's a bit difficult to eat, because when you bite it, out the other side. I do hope this isn't the first time I've been it. Anyway. Do you know that tastes marvellous? It really does. It tastes exactly as it did in Reggio Emilia. So if you're going to Reggio Emilia, or if you can't really afford the fare, the idea would be to make these beautiful, I don't know what they're called, really, Parmesan matches. That's a good idea. Pig's ears. I don't make sure it's really good. Serve that with drinks, and I'm sure you'll be delighted. God bless you. <laughs>